final one, of course, is by no means a sellout. And Cuellar goes to Dave Cash, who has four hits in the series, and one of them on Cuellar was a double. And he takes a strike. It is 309 down the line, 360 to left center, 380 a little deeper left center, then farther out to 390, and straight away, 410. No balls and a strike to Cash, and the screwball is outside for the ball, one and one. In the game against Cuellar, in which the Pirates defeated them 5-1, to one, over in Pittsburgh with Glass, his mound opponent, a couple of changes were made since that lineup. There's a ball hit toward third and a bad hop and a fine play by Brooks Robinson throws him out. A sharply hit ground ball by Dave Cash, cornered down there by Brooks Robinson. Now Gene Klein stands in on the regular season, battered at 308. One home and 24 run battered, and he has one hit in the series. That was a triple, but it was not against Cuellar, as Al Oliver played in the center field slot against Cuellar and batted in the number two position. Starts him off with a slow curve, hit deep toward left center, Rettman running hard along with Buford, and it'll be Rettman. So it's two down. Outside of the switch that Jim Simpson told you about regarding Willie Stargell, Manager Danny Murtaugh, even as far back as 1960, had one method of uh, managing the club that uh, sort of befuddled many reporters. For instance, he started against Cuellar in the third game, Oliver, and batted him number two. And without any change in any manner at all, he just said, my center fielder will be Kleins, and he's batting in the number two spot. In other words, he rarely shifts his players by their ability once he establishes the lineup. That's it. Here's Clemente in, and it's inside the ball. Bobby batting at 341 for the year. 11 hits in the series. Has a home run and three runs batted in. The outfield played him way around to right. Buford giving him an awful lot of the left field line. A 1 0 pitch, and it's into the dirt for the ball. 2 0. If Cuellar should make a little bit of a mistake, Buford's in for a long run. Because he is way off that line. Balls, no strikes to Roberto. That's low, Scrooge in there. Turn one. Well, any with 11 base hits, we'll check on that. Needs two more to tie a series record, the uh, most hits in the seven game series. And there's a the slow chopper hit down toward Belanger. The shortstop comes up, he throws, and just does get it. Cuellar retires the Pirates in the first inning in one, two, three fashion. And we go now to the bottom of the first. No score. Along with Bob Prince, Jim Simpson back in Baltimore, Buford will lead it off against Steve Blass, who won the third game 5-1. to one, And in that third game, allowed the Orioles just three hits. He struck out eight. He walked only two. The only run he gave up was Frank Robinson's leadoff home run in the seventh. And that was the first ball game that the Pirates won. Last, the tall right-hander from Canaan, Connecticut, 29 years old, warming up now with Sandian. And Buford, a switch hitter, batting left-handed, as he's had to do most of this series. Bob Beal made a brief appearance in relief in the second game. And Lou Walker, a left-hander, started in the fourth game. Other than that, the Orioles have been seeing a steady diet of right-handers. Buford ready, Blast ready, and so is Bob Prince. All right, Jim Simpson, and Buford, uh, five hits in the series, has two home runs. And he wore the yoke, as they say, or the collar against Blast. Most everybody did. Frank Robinson only got two of the three hits, a home run and a single, and uh, Brooks Robinson the other one. So there's really very little uh, need of telling you what the rest of the Orioles did against Blast in that game, because they didn't do a thing. Now Pagan has come up at his third. Coaching at third base, Billy Hunter for the Orioles. George Stoller over to first. The outfield around to the right. No scores. We play in the bottom of the first. Blast comes down. A fat ball underneath. Hit the ball. One ball, no strike. Nestor Shalak calling the balls and strikes. Ed Sudol, John Rice, Jim Odom around the pass with John Kibler in left field and Ed Vargo in right field. All right, I'll switch off that. It's Vargo in left and Kibler in right. Here's the delivery, and it tails outside. Ball two. Your left field foul line umpire is Ed Vargo. Your right field foul line umpire is John Kibler. Two balls, no strikes. So Buford leading it off, and he takes one through there. Shortened up as though he was not going to really bunt, just watching the pitch all the way. and strike one. 
to Buford. No score in the bottom of the first. And a 2-1 delivery, a fastball, a swing and a miss, and it's 2-2. And that time, a good riding fastball by Blass. Blass has had uh, plenty of days of rest. There's been speculation that if uh, Baltimore gets into the Pirate bullpen, you might see Keeson and a couple of others on the lawn roll with Liv Walker. And uh, for Baltimore, undoubtedly could be Duke. 2-2 two -two pitch. is a high curve. One upstairs, ball three. Three and two. Ball three, strike two, wind up by a blast. Back with a curve, misses outside. Oh, Buford is on. That is the first walk in the ball game. Blast only issued two walks in the third game against Baltimore, the game he defeated Cuellar by the score of uh, five to one. So he's already started off with a walk against a man who was a very difficult uh, fellow to pitch to in that leadoff spot. Now here's Dave Johnson batting at 282, 18 homers, and uh, 72 runs batted in on the year. He has four hits in the series, no homers, three runs batted in. Last checks him, sends him a fastball outside ball one. Johnson just fell off the plate in the big hit yesterday for the Orioles and let go of the bat and blew it into left field. But he'll uh, treasure that one. And he's a computer expert. He figures that he hits better in the two hole than he does anywhere else in the Baltimore lineup. View for the short lead off first and the delivery now, and there's a foul straight back in the count of one and one. Well, it's just the type of a base hit that. Uh, Davey Johnson got yesterday against the Pirates, and many players do throughout the season. And it makes it even more difficult to throw the no-hitter. Just hit one off the end of the bat or in on the fist, and then bloops, or the bat breaks, and all sorts of things occur. Now, a blast is called time, and John Rice, the second base umpire. They want a uh, new baseball examined there, I guess, or that ball taken care of, and so plate umpire Nestor Shylak looking at it, returns it to San Gian. One ball and one strike. The outfield's playing Davey Johnson straight away. The infield likewise in that capacity with the only man up in the infield taking on at third. A ball and a strike to Dave Johnson. Blast delivers and it's bunted on a pop-up to Blast. He has it and no play at first. So Johnson trying to drop the bunt, popped it up, and Blast grabs it for the unassisted put out. And here's Boog Powell. Boog with three hits in the series, batting at 256. 22 homers, 92 runs batted in on the regular season. No uh, homers and one run batted in in the series. Let's see how the Pirates deploy the infield. They have been overshifting with Hernandez, Cash, and Robertson. One out and one on, and a ball to more first under very cloudy skies and no score. The infield shift is on. Hernandez, Cash, and Robertson all off the first base side, and Powell steps out. The two fellas, you expect to get those cannonading shots, have not yet done it. Powell and Starkle. And Blast starts him right off with that changeup, and he likes to establish that pitch early, as Jim Simpson told you the other day over in Pittsburgh. And once he establishes it, if it's in there, he'll stay right with it. He went to it very early in the ball game over to Pittsburgh, and it was a successful pitch for him. And he started Powell off right there with it. Now he comes back with a fastball, hit Powell out of play down the right field line into the upper deck. So it's no balls, two strikes. So Powell swung on that one like he was guessing fastball, and he really pulled it, Jim. Hope whoever's up in that upper deck had a glove. No balls, two strikes. Blast reading the sign from San Gian. Buford at first base on a walk, one out, and, on a, and uh, no score here in the bottom of the first. The 0-2 pitch. There's that changeup. Another foul hit down the line. And Powell is now waiting on that pitch, and we'll see whether Blast will uh, change around, maybe brush him back or go outside with him. They're going to have a little conference out on the mound. San Gian wants to chat things over with Steve. this game up in easy fashion, disposing of the Pirates in one, two, three order. And the Bucks who had left 59 men on the bases in the first six games didn't have any problems there in the first inning. Now, Boog Powell, no balls, two strikes. 
Flash checking on Buford over to first, and the pitch, and he almost hit him right off his left knee. Came in fast, the ball at two strikes. Somebody asked uh, Murtaugh, did he have any reason he could have signed the one he'd left so many men on, 59 runners. He said, I think it's because we put so many on. And Earl Weaver's coming out now. And they're going to object a little bit to something that Blass is doing out on that mound. And uh, he steps off the mound. And Mr. Shalak is pointing into the fire dugout. And they may be asking Danny Murtaugh to come out. They want to determine some sort of a delivery by Blass. And there's one thing. If Blass has a certain type of delivery that is peculiar to him alone, he is allowed to do that. And there is no bark involved. But it must be one that is peculiar to him. And the National League umpires are probably being questioned right here, Jim Simpson, about that move. Because uh, Blass has a certain type of move that Weaver has objected to. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But the ball and two strike count on Booth Powell. Murtaugh still out there in the middle of that huddle. With, uh, and they brought the entire infield in. Now they're showing the glass on the pitching plate right out there talking it over. And all the umpires have uh, become involved in this situation. It has to do, I'm sure, with his delivery while on the mound and his position on the rubber as to whether or not when he moves as he comes to the plate, he's in the act of committing a box. If you step up that one foot and step off and then come back in, you could be in a position of a box. And that also could be uh, a little ploy on the part of Mr. Weaver to uh, bring about a little anxiety on the part of Mr. Blast. Like a man on the first tee, as a man's about to swing a driver, and they say, do you inhale or exhale on your backswing? Maybe Earl Weaver's doing the same thing to Steve Blast. And they're allowing Blast to uh, make several deliveries to see if he can acclimate himself to the manner in which Weaver is arguing. Now, here comes Weaver back out again. To Nestor Shalak and Weaver apparently is unhappy with the way in which Blass is pitching off that plate. You said Weaver's unhappy. How about Blass? <laughs> well, I have to agree with you there. Blass would be extremely unsettled. Uh, and Nestor Shalak appears to be uh, satisfied with the manner in which he's coming off that mound. So Weaver's made his point. And uh, so we have a little fireworks here early. One ball and two strikes. Buford, the runner at uh, first base, he's there on the walk. Now they're, we have a monitor here, and we can see that our NBC camera crew is anchoring on Blass's right foot. And that's where the argument's been as to just what he's been doing with it as he comes off. Comes to the plate, and it's low for the ball, two and two. Once you put that foot down on that plate with a runner on base, there's a certain thing you can do with it, and there's a certain thing you can't do with it. And undoubtedly, Weaver or his scouts picked up a motion by a blast, and uh, they want him to anchor that foot. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch to Powell. Change up high, ball three, three and two. just received word, and I find it hard to believe that he's pitching off the end of the rubber and they object to it. He can pitch off any part of that rubber he wants to pitch off as long as he has made contact with it. Now, they may have said that he was all the way up past the rubber and over on the first base side. We'll tell you more about that in a minute. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, he stuck him out. Now, some pitchers position their, their anchor foot on the pitching rubber right in the middle of it. Some work off the third base side of the rubber. Some work off the first base side of the rubber. And undoubtedly now, Jim Simpson, the world weaver is saying that he did not have contact with it. He was too far off it. And that he was more towards first base with no contact made whatsoever. So now it's uh, Frank Robinson standing in. And uh, seven hits in the series. A high fly out to right field, slicing Bobby Clemente running hard. Gages it perfectly against the wind, and the wind that one, without any question, affected the flight of that ball. That had a chance to be an out of here up against the wall. So it's no runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left, and at the end of one inning of play, there is no score.
Baltimore, Jim Simpson with Bob Prince as we go to the top of the second inning. The Pirates went down in order against Cuellar in the first inning. We had a little uh, discussion with Earl Weaver, the umpire, Steve Blast, Ernie Mur Danny Murchaw about Steve Blast's position on the pitching rubber in the oil first. Hubert walked, but uh, Blast got the next three in a row. And Bob, I was watching Frank Robertson who hit that long plot of right field. He was not taking off and running, feeling it probably would be caught, and we caution everybody, Robertson does have the bad right leg, and he was barely trotting to first base. Well, you're very right there, Jim, and the fellow that took off and really ran was Roberto Clemente, and but for the wind blowing very strongly from that sector over toward left, that ball could have challenged the wall. Here's Bob Robertson, and he belts one right down to Brooks Robertson. And there's one out, a line drive to Robertson. Sounded like he might have broken his bat. Robertson has five hits in the series. So now, four in a row for Cuellar, as Manny Sanguin has been moved up to the number five spot, in with nine hits, second only to Clemente in the number of the hits for the Pirates in the series standing in. Sanguin against uh, Cuellar had uh, two hits and four at bats, a single and a double, and scored a run. One out and then on in the Pirates' second inning. Game seven of the 1971 World Series. The Baltimore will just be leaving out of here, I guess, about Wednesday. They head for Japan, where they'll play over there for about a month. For the fine teams in Japan. There's a foul back by uh, Sangin off the screwball. Nothing and one. Japanese baseball is a tremendous uh, sport over there, of course. And appreciation is utterly unbelievable. The 0 1 pitch. And a swing and a miss. He tried to hammer the ball to right field. Strike two. One thing the Orioles will have to learn, there's no such thing as a rain out in Japanese baseball. The parachutes come up and you just keep right on playing. No balls. Two strikes. One out and on the pitch. And it's hit foul to the right out of play as Cuellar tried to come by with his fastball. If yesterday's mark of... Three 20-game winners in two innings was a World Series record. Certainly, four 20-game winners in as many games in a row is another record. Because Cuellar comes right back with a 20-year, 20-victory 20 uh, mark. A ball and two strikes, screwball missing outside. Cuellar reading the sign now from Ellie Hendricks. Who sets low over the plate and it sends a scroogey down there. It's bounced off the chest of Brooks Robinson, keeps it in front of him, throws him out. Now that's three plays in five outs, and that's more plays than Brooks Robinson had against the Pirates in the first couple of games as they attempt very much to stay away from that side of the diamond if they can. Here's Willie Stodgill, who has seven walks in the series and four hits. He's batting sixth in the order. On the year, batted at 295 with 48 homers and 125 runs batted in. The Oriole outfield around to the right on him. And Stargill takes a fastball through for a strike. Two down, none on, no score. The sky a little brighter. The lights, however, have been on since the start of this game. We are into the windup. Over the top and strike two calls. Scored first in four of the previous games in the first, third, fifth, and sixth games. Game scoreless here for the moment with two down and none on in the top of the second. Oh, two pitch and Stargo strikes out. Three up and three down. Play our six to perfect two innings. We go to the bottom of the second and there is no score. We go to the last of the second inning now in a scoreless ball game, and we nerve Redmond, Brooks Robinson, and Ellie Hendricks to face Steve Blast. Blast walked Buford in the Baltimore first inning, and thereafter we got Davy Johnson on a bunch stop right back to the mound, struck out Boob Powell after much discussion over his delivery from the mound, and got Frank Robinson on the side of right. Sonic Sierra is up in the last of the second inning is Bob. Here's Merv Redmond. He had a big base hit yesterday. Series game. The ball has passed about 15 times going through the infield. All there is referred to that as a ball with eyes on it, but it's a good hit, and it turned out to be a dandy. He bounces a chopper down to the shortstop, and Andrew just took a funny hop, and he throws him out. That ball started right over the mound and took a divot, hit something, and cut over right onto Hernandez's throwing side. One out, and here's Brooks Robinson batting at 272. No homers and five runs batted in. 
Brooks has uh, seven hits in the series. They're going to play him straight away. One out and on, no score. That's ball from Blast at the knees for a call strike. The theme from my fair lady is get me to the church on time, and the Baltimore Orioles are very aware of that. Here's a pitch high, one and one. Jack Dunn, vice president of the Baltimore Orioles, arranged for a helicopter to land right out here outside of Memorial Stadium by a high school, and that helicopter will then take Bruce Keeson and Bob Moose. Keeson to be married and Moose to be the best man back to Pittsburgh. At least it'll hop them over to the Friendship Airport where a corporate plane is on hand from somebody in Pittsburgh to fly him on in here to get to the wedding on time. Two balls and a strike. Now the two on delivery. And it just broke inside ball three. Three and one. I'd rather imagine throughout his professional career, Bruce Keeson, a victor in one of these series games. He'll take a lot of ribbing down through the years in baseball, planning a wedding on the seventh day of the World Series. 3-1 pitch. And it's called ball four. And so that's the second one. That's as many walks as Glass issued. And the third game, he won over Cuellar 5-1. to one. <laughs> Jim Simpson told you he had eight strikeouts in that ball game. He picked up one thus far. Here is the catcher, Ellie Hendricks, the Pirates employee game, the infield ship. Moving uh, Hernandez over on the first base side. Hendricks, the left hand batter, on the air, 250 average, and had nine homers. Not holding on Brooks Robinson as a fastball pops at the knees for a tall strike. Second, the game is scoreless. Now, blast from the belt delivers a change. It's just only down to first base. Back to retrieve the ball. And they had a little bit of a foul up there as Robertson went out wide, thinking he could get the ball, throw it up and force Brooks Robinson. And then it hit off his glove, and Dave Cash, who was bird dogging in behind him, couldn't come up with it. And thus, there's going to be an error charge here. And the ball went right between the legs of Bobby Roberts. He tipped off that one leg and went out in a shallow leg right behind first, and Dave Cash had to get it. So the Pirates have committed an error. And the error is charged to first baseman Bob Roberts. And with Robinson on second, Hendricks on first is Mark Belanger. They got off at 266. Oh, uh, here's Nolan batted in in the series. 266 for the season. And as a on second, you got a first base, and he wide, but he gets a double base off. Give it to the nervous. Not too much by George Stollett. Belanger had, had two all about it. Double play is four unassisted on the first base. The inning showed no runs, no hits, one error, one left. At the end of two, no score. Welcome to the Bob Prince as we go to the top of the third inning in the bottom of the part batting order. And Jose Pagan, Jack Fernandez, and Steve Blass. Neither team has a hit yet. The Pirates committed an error, but as it turned out, it wasn't costly. Of course, the game is scoreless, and he was bought. Jose Pagan, standing in on the ear, batted at 241. Has three hits in the series, and two of them against Cuellar, with a double and a single and a run batted in. He takes a fastball and sunk a little outside, ball one. Cuellar has pitched perfect ball through the front two. Now the left-hander has his sign, starts his motion, sends a screwball, is let up on it, taken for a strike, one and one. They got on a veteran of World Series play, former skate star, of course, with the Giants. Been with the Pirates now for several years, been a great bench player, and there's a ball pulled to third, and Brooks Robinson has it. He throws it across, one out. Now for Robinson, he's had one, two, three assists, and one put out. Four, four chances. Here's Hernandez at 206, the Pirate shortstop. Four hits in the series. Hernandez did not do anything against uh, Cuellar in the third game of the series. He did come up as a pinch batter in the seventh and grounded out. He bunts and he's hit by his own batted ball, and if it's in fair territory, let's see what they'll rule. They do not. They rule the ball. Wow. He was in the Mr. Shallock, wasting no time whatsoever, just came right out and said that ball bounced in the batter's box, came up and hit him, and thus it's a foul ball. Now 
balls and a strike. Baseball being tossed in. Uh, Nestor looks at it, returns it to play. 309 down both lines, and it falls away in all sorts of configurations with inner fences and outer fences. 14 feet high on the brick park, 7 feet high out in center field. There's a foul up along first and twisting out of play. Oh, and two. And then you have to be careful on balls hit here. If they're hit low enough between the 309 and the 360 mark, if they hit to the left of the 360 mark, they're in play. If they hit to the right of it, it's a home run and all sorts of things. A foul down the first base side, 0-2. Oh, so far, a no-hitter with only one error. Pittsburgh's error. No balls, two strikes. Jackie Hernandez, one out and on. Play our delivers, and here's a ball hit deep toward right. Frank Robinson will be there. So it's two down, and Steve Blass will stand in. Blass on the ear batted at 120. Had no homers and two runs batted in. Two down in the third. A swing and a miss by Blast on that screwball. And lots of cheering when uh, Pirates Roberto Clemente goes out to right field, giving rise to the belief that there are a lot of Pittsburgh fans that have come over here for the weekend series and are lodged out in that area. There's a ball bounced down to second baseman Davey Johnson, an easy two hopper on the first to retire the side. Three up and three down, and we go down to the Baltimore third, and there is no score. The Baltimore Orioles versus the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, there are all kinds of records at stake in World Series, especially when you get as far as seven games. The Pirates had a chance to tie four other clubs, the last of which was the Cardinals back in 1968, for the fewest errors in the seven-game series of two. But the air charge to Bob Robertson made that three, so the Pirates are no longer in that three stage. And Pittsburgh came into the ball game having left 59 men on base. The record is 64 in a seven-game series by Detroit. But thus far, the Pirates aren't challenging that record either. They have gone down nine men in a row, leaving nobody on base. And the man that's done it is coming up right now, Mike Cuellar, the pitcher for Baltimore. And he will get a hand as Bob Prince steps back. Cuellar, 103 on the season. I think, too, Jim Simpson, is it not correct that if uh, Baltimore should win this, they'll be the first team in series history to win the series in seven games, winning all four in their own ballpark? Absolutely correct. And, of course, the Euros are working, Bob, on a nine-game winning streak in this ballpark. So lots of things are riding here. Here's Mike Cuellar, our left-hand batter, stands in. Had one homer here. Cuellar against Blass. Went 0 for 1. Did draw a walk in the sixth inning. In the first game, they appeared against each other. Blast starts him off with a tailing fastball outside. One ball to no strike. Agon is up tight to the left-hand batter, going steady with that foul line at third. Uh, Cuellar swung and could have had better success if he'd have swung when Sanguin let it go back to Blast. Ball was by him, in other words. One ball, one strike. There's a foul flicked to the left and out of play. A fellow that took two swings on a pitch one time. His name was Billy White. On a big, fearful changeup sent his way, and he was way out in front and swung, and he hit it on the second swing, and of course, that didn't count. And there's a swing and a miss, and Cuellar goes down, and Lass has recorded his second strikeout. That'll bring up Buford, who walked to lead off the Baltimore first inning. He's been the one of the two Baltimore base runners against Blacks. One, or one of the three, I should say. Buford walked. Robinson, Brooks, that is, walked. And Hendricks got aboard on an air. A little difficult when you get involved in plays here. Jim Simpson and I are trying to phonetically let you know who's who. But when you start talking about Brooks Robinson, Frank Robinson, and Bob Robertson, you get yourself uh, twisted up a little bit. There's a curve in the dirt in behind Buford, and he uh, skipped rope. I think he's upset he didn't let the ball hit him. Best man I ever saw at getting hit by a pitch when he wanted to get hit was Jackie Robinson. He'd make all sorts of motions, but he'd never leave the spot. And he'd get hit. One and one. You are supposed to try to get out of the way of it. One ball, one strike. 
One out and on in the Baltimore third, and no score. Now the 1-1 delivery from Blast comes right up with a hard slider, but he's outside with it, 2-1. Last, uh, last time he was uh, pitching, of course, his father tried to get over the dugout and get down on the field, and it took a little trouble to get him there. There's a ball jammed him beautifully. It's hit down where Blast dies on it, and now they rule the foul ball off the foot of uh, uh, Buford. Blast going very sharply over to the left. He's going to pick up the ball and dive in field of it, but it's a foul ball. Should Blast be victorious here today, Jim Simpson? I don't know if the Baltimore fine security people here would recognize his father. He had enough trouble in his own home park getting down in the field. That was funny. Tony Kubek was trying to interview him for both radio and television, and as the gentleman tried to get across the dugout, the police, not knowing who it was, tried to keep him away, and she broke away from Tony and said, let me get him. That's my father. They embraced, and then the interview. Two balls, two strikes to Don Buford. Blast is just outside, three and two. He nibbled on the corner that time, didn't quite pick it up. So Buford, out to a three-two count, walk his first time up, swings and hammers a foul off the first base side on a pitch that's well in on the hands. See now where the President of the United States, uh, Quit being a crystal ball gazer for this series. He predicted a couple of the outcomes successfully. He decided he let well enough alone. Three balls, two strikes. And there's a ball belted into the right center into the gap. Going over to get to it quickly from Eddie. And Buford has the first hit of the ball game for either side. A line single to right center field. It comes with one away in the Baltimore third. And there was no doubt about that one. Now, there's one thing about that hit here. That's a single. If that same hit occurs over at Three River Stadium, that's extra basis. Because of their synthetic turf. Now, here's Dave Johnson. He tried to bunt back in the first inning and popped up to blast. They're running. They got him picked off. Robertson throws the ball down to Cash. They tag Buford, and he's out. And Cash might have been spiked accidentally there. They had him picked off. They went right to first base with the ball. They fired it on up to Cash. He really put the ball on Buford, and Buford got a spike in there accidentally on Cash, and he's examining right now his right shin bone, and Pittsburgh's trainer Tony Barteron is coming out. That pickoff play will go blast the pitcher to Robertson, the first baseman, to Cash, the second baseman, or one to three to four. Cash is going to be all right. And it was uh, in and around the right uh, shin area. Glass is now loosening a little bit while uh, he has the opportunity. And Dave Johnson has yet to see a pitch and missed the third inning. We'll be up now with two men out, nobody on. And we chose to tell you about Bob Moose has a good move. Glass is just a shade behind Moose and moves, and that proved it right there on Buford, who can run. Yeah, the ball hits sharp to the third. They gone, makes a brilliant play on a short hop and throws him out. A magnificent play down there by... Jose Pagan on behalf of the Pirates. So, uh, no runs are hit, no errors, nobody left, and at the end of three, there is no score. Along with Bob Prince, Jim Simpson back in Baltimore. What fireworks there have been thus far by the Orioles, they have walked a couple of men, reached on an error, and have the games only base hit. But like the Pirates, they have no runs. The Pirates haven't enjoyed having a base runner yet. They've gone down nine men in a row with only one hitting the ball hard. That was Bob Robertson led off the second with a line drive right to Brooks Robinson. They go to the top of the fourth. Score this ball game in the top of the Pirate batting order. Here's Bob. All right, Jim and Dave Cash, you got it out to third in the first inning. We'll lead it off here as they turn their lineup around for the first time. And this is the final game of the 1971 series. Clay Otter's fastball, swinging and a foul ball, and it's all at once. Frank Osiak coaching at third for the Pirates. Then over to first base, Don Leppard. Danny Murtaugh was asked the inevitable question, and I'm sure the same of Earl Weaver. The 0-1 delivery, and there's a ball hit out towards uh, Johnson. He goes to the left and spears it with a one-handed draft. Second baseman Dave Johnson takes the second base dive of Dave Cash and holds on to it for an out. Here's Clines. And he 
I don't know, and I can't say what Earl Weaver would have said, but I'm sure they asked the same question. But they happened to be in within ear range of Murtaugh's answer about what difference it would make about winning this game and the financial side of it, whether it would affect the play. And there's a bunt by Kleins, and Cuellar is off the mound fast throws, and a great play by Booth Powell. Was a real fit for a base hit. Fine fielding by Cuellar. A low throw and Powell on a ball throw and right in the runner came up magnificently. You know, they talk about this Baltimore infield, Bob, being uh, with Brooks Robinson at third, Bart Belanger at short, and Davy Johnson at second. Do not count out Booth Powell. I'm sure you don't. But one of his best plays is digging the ball out of the dirt. And that was a prime example right there. Save the base hit. Climbs it quick. That was a magnificent play. Just super. We wanted to say what Danny Mercer's answer to the reporters was about the difference in the prime money rate on the winner and loser share. He said, play the seventh game. Pride is the thing you're thinking about. You're pride in the game and being the world champion. Here's Bobby Clemente. Pops to short his first time up. Hits a screwball a mile in the left center field. It is going. It is gone. For Clemente over the left center wall, 380 feet away. And those who said he couldn't pull a ball just found out on a high screw ball what he can do with it. And the Pirates lead one to nothing. That's 12 base hits for Clemente, his second home run. And is against Quayar. Second home run. There's a bouncer from the Bobby Robertson in the hole over goes Brooks Robinson, throws to Powell. That'll retire the side. So Clemente, who hits the home run, is now hit safely in 14 consecutive World Series games. Puts the Pirates on top here in the top of the fourth as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Pittsburgh won in Baltimore, nothing. Bob Prince, not to bring up an old dispute, but the statements made by Roberto Clemente that Memorial Stadium in Baltimore is less than a good ballpark in which to play. And the fact that the hitting background is still poor. There are uh, some white houses out beyond the center field bench. And many times the ball comes out of the right-hander's hand, out of those white house backgrounds. And it's very difficult to pick up. But if Clemente, as I said yesterday, could see in this ballpark, I wonder what he'd do. He's wearing it out. It'd be pretty hard to tell what he might do. He, this would be an ideal park for him because he can hit them from all sections. That hit, by the way, was the first surrendered by Cuellar. Now the batter is Boog Powell. He struck out in the first inning. Pirates lead 1-0, playing here in the top of the fourth. Each team in with one hit. And a tailing fastball. Blast took a little off his fastball that time. Just let it slide outside. Ball one, no strikes to Boog. The infield shift to gain on. Hernandez, Cash, and Robertson. Ball on the first base side. Blast delivers. A curveball pops him up foul. And running hard for it, San Guillen and Pagan. And they can't get to it. It fell just in front of the Oriole dugout. Pittsburgh scores now first in the five games of the seven. The first, the third, the fifth, the sixth, and now here are the seven. Luke Powell in with 113 career home. And uh, with the way Pagan was playing way over on Powell, he had to run about 100 feet to get to it. One ball, one strike pitch. And there's a ball hammered down to first. Cash is over. And throws out Boog Powell. That infield shift is picking him up. Now here's Frank Robinson in with seven hits in the series. He and Brooks Robinson have the most hits for the Baltimore Orioles. Pittsburgh leading one nothing on a booming home run hit by Bobby Clemente to left center field. Frank Robinson slides deep to right in the first inning. Playing with a heavily bandaged leg. Pops this one foul up behind home plate. San Guillen drifts back. But it'll not get out on the playing field. This has been a, really a tremendous World Series. It started off as if Baltimore was going to blow Pittsburgh right out of the park. Joe one delivery has hit high and fouled to the right out of play. And then, of course, Pittsburgh went back to Three River Stadium, and they turned things around, and Blast was one of the fellows that did it. And they then began a long string of scoreless innings for Baltimore, few hits per game, and very few runs, of course, and three straight losses in a row. And then the filling 10 inning victory yesterday. The 0-2 delivery, and there's a foul straight back. So, 162 games for the regular season. 
Three games for Baltimore in the championship series. And six here, and it's all on the line for them in one contest. And for the Pirates, one more game than that, as they had to go four games before they could defeat the Giants for the National League Championship. The 0-2 pitch to Frank Robinson, a changeup, struck him out swinging. And it looks as though he, uh, Nestor Shalak said he did get a piece of the foul tip it. Well, that is the third strikeout for Blass, and with two down, and on here is Merv Rettman, who bounced to short in the second inning. Now it's lead, one nothing. Here in the bottom half of the fourth, two away and then on. Roberto Clemente slammed a high scoochie right into the left center slot for a home run. Glass is uh, wide with this one for a ball. Clemente with one more hit will tie uh, Bobby Richardson. And Bra Lou Brock, there's a slow chopper down to third. Tegon comes on again, another short off, and he throws out Redman. And Tegon continues to scintillate over there at third. Three up and three down at the end of four. Pittsburgh one and Baltimore nothing. Top of the fifth inning, the Pirates are holding on to a one to nothing lead. We'll recall that as of yesterday, the Pirates were holding on to a 2 nothing lead in the late innings, and Baltimore came back to take that thriller by the score of 3-2. While well, the ball game is far from over, but again... Screwball outside. The Pirates have now hit five home runs in this World Series. From any for two, Bobby Robertson with a pair. One ball, two strikes. One two pitch to Sanguin is hit deep toward left center. It's going to drop in for the base hit. Looked like he hung a screwball up into his eyes and he popped it. So Sanguin has the second base hit of the ball game. And the batter will be Willie Stargell, a strikeout victim. His first time up. five home runs in the World Series. So they're even in that department. Stargell takes a fastball down low, ball one. Despite Cuellar's delivery from the left side and Stargell being a left-hand batter, the Oriole outfield is still swung to the right. Sanguin off first. And a slow pitch upstairs, ball two. Sanguin now has ten base hits. He and Clemente are running at each other. Clemente in with 12. Two balls and no strikes. One nothing Pittsburgh with Sanguin, the runner at first in the fifth. Play our check, Sanguin, comes to the plate. And he's outside, ball three. Remember now that Stargell has had seven walks in this series, and that's the first time today Cuellar has gone three and zero to the batter. On deck is Jose Tegon. Again, Cuellar ready. Comes to the plate, and he's on the corner for a strike, and it's three and one. Stargell taking all the way. Pittsburgh leading one to nothing. Has a runner at first in Sanguin here in the fifth. Three ball, one strike delivery. No, instead of throw to first and back safely, Manny Sanguin. And Don Leppert is now questioning the call a little bit of that move. The pitch. Stargell saw it off right at the thighs with a fastball, and the count is full, three and two. Two strikes. Sanguin edging off first base and a 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And Stargell becomes the second strikeout victim of Mike Quayer, having been the first victim back in the second inning. Now here's Jose Pagan. Down at the third, back in the third inning. Pagan against Quayer in the third game that they beat him 5 to 1, had a double and a single in four at bats. They would have had a lot of contact with each other, both uh, here in the United States and in winter ball. And then Cuellar starts him off outside, a ball and no strikes. Sanguin held by Boot Powell. Cuellar pitching up the first base part of the rubber, sends it in. It's a chopper for the hole, backhanding the ball to Spalanger. He throws just in time for the out on Sanguin. He's arguing. Pagan is, uh, of course, at first base with no play having been made. Sanguin is arguing on the play. We have a monitor here. We'll observe it. Ground ball by Belanger in the hole. Leaping up and firing off balance while in midair. And I'll tell you on the monitor, that's a close call. But uh, it's out. We're observing the same one. A 
swing and a miss. Fire target in the first game of the series, the same kind of a call out of a big inning. For Clemente then followed with a base hit and started with a walk, and instead of leading 3-0, they figured they'd have been leading 4-0. Well, also the tough calls for everybody. In a World Series, they're magnified, naturally. They don't want delivery outside. Mark Sanguian out, Belanger to Johnson. Belanger had to go way in the hole, leave high in the air and throw off balance to try to get a very speedy runner, and he did. Hernandez, 1-1. One, one. No, a quick throw instead of the first where Pagan is back. One ball and one strike. The delivery. And a fastball in there. Call strike two. Pittsburgh, one run on two hits. The Orioles, no runs on one hit. Playing here in the Pirates' fifth inning. 3-0-9 down both lines. 4-10 straight away. Play are checking on Pagan. And the pitch to Hernandez strikes him out swinging on that screw ball. So Playar has his third strikeout. The inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. And we now move to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Pittsburgh won, Baltimore nothing. Now, Jim Simpson, to bring out another cliche, we got another nail biter going here. Here's Jim Simpson for the action from here on in. All right, Steve Blast, first pitch, the strike on the upright corner, and Brooks has just fouled off the second pitch, Bob. To the right, it's 0 2 to Robinson, and it's 1 0 ballgame. We're in the last of the fifth. The Pirates lead it, they win it, they're the world champions. Robinson walked in the second inning, got as far as second base. Drills one to right field. Clemente comes in a couple of steps, and there's the basket catch for out number one of the Baltimore fifth. Clemente taking about chest high with his glove and right hand nestled against his chest. Ellie Hendricks, who reached on the third error of the series, charged to the Pirates. Bob Robertson uh, on a ground ball between first and second. Hendricks has three base hits and 17 times at bat in the World Series. Does have the power to get a ball out of here. He did in the American League Championship. Long, big, and left-handed against the right-hander, Steve Blass, who is trying to win his second game of this 1971 World Series and to win the series for the Pirates. Hendrick steps back in. Blass, working off the left side of the rubber, throws at it up high, taking pitch outside ball one. On deck is Mark Belanger, the only run of the ball game, a high screw ball thrown to Roberto Clemente. With two out in the fourth inning, Clemente drilled over the left center field wall. Started to wind up and now steps off and is ready to take the signal again. Last ready for a strike on the outside corner. Looks like a slider. One ball, one strike. The score in yesterday's ball game was two to nothing with the Pirates getting their runs in the third, second and third inning. The Orioles tying it up with single runs in the sixth and the seventh. And, of course, he went on to this head setting. Roberto Clemente goes over to the right and cannot get the drive of Hendricks. The ball is picked up by Klein to throw to second base as Hendricks teams in and has a double. Dying run at second base. Ball was hit up the alley in right center field. Clemente and Klein, both of whom have fine speed, Klein with exceptional speed, did not get to it. Here is Belanger. So he hit into a double play with men at first and second and one out back in the second. Up with another opportunity to drive in a ball to more runs. Belanger has four hits and 19 times at bat. Right-handed hitter, well off the plate, close stance, looking out to Steve Lance. Last pitching from the stretch, throws a breaking pitch, hits the straightaway center field. Klein's goes back. Hendricks makes it this to tag up. Klein does it. Hendricks bluffs going to third base, and Klein fires at the cutoff man Hernandez. Hendricks goes back to second. Two down. That'll bring up Mike Cuellar, who struck out. The lead off the third inning. One to nothing, the Pirates. We are in the last of the fifth. Temperature in the mid-60s. The breeze not as strong now as it was at the game's beginning. About eight miles an hour. Well, there's no chance for rain. Blast. Looks down to Robinson at first base and backs him up a few stops. 
Moyar does have home run power. He'll take the big swing. Outside with the first pitch. Ball one to Mike Cleo. One run on two hits. Has submitted that error. Baltimore has no run. And has just picked up its second hit. Last looks back at Hendricks and throws outside again. It's two and up with the pitch with Mike Cleo. Neither Marta nor Weaver will be reluctant to go to the bullpen today. That's the first sign of need. And all pitchers are in the bullpen. 2 0. Breaking pitch. Drops over. Slider. Two balls, one strike. They play Cuellar almost straight away and climbs rather deep in center field. Throws again, swing and a miss. It's two balls, two strikes. Hendricks with a double down at second base, not taking a big lead. Last ready to throw. 2 2 pitch, it's popped up foul and looks like it'll get out of play, but Pagan comes over near the oil dugout and then watches it drop deep in the seats downstairs. You know, Jim Simpson, uh, Baltimore ownership, the Hoffberger family and all, and all connected with the Baltimore club, of course, over on the third base side, and the part ownership with the Galbert family and the Johnsons and all, and it's the one thing, the financial side of it doesn't mean one thing to them. They're just uh, right up on their nerve ends. This is uh, really a great thrill for both members of the great clubs. 2-2, Two -two, and it's right down the middle, called strike three. Hendricks is left standing at second base. The runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left. He's gone through five full innings now, and the Pirates lead Baltimore in the seventh game of the World Series, one to nothing. Back again in Baltimore, Steve Blass, Dave Cash, and Gene Klein. They have just dragged the infield again, and if you're not aware, they have a young girl here by the name of Linda Wareheim who runs around with a broom and dusts off the first base, second base, third base, plus the shoes of the Baltimore infielders as they're dragging it off, and usually she will come over to the third base coach of the opposition and either brush his shoes off, or on some occasion, she will sweep dirt onto his shoes. Yesterday, Frank Osiak of the Pirates did not come out of the dugout until she had left. Today, he was over there and very wary at watching what she was going to do. And young Miss Warheim went up and took the broom and swatted third base coach Jim Odom right in the seat of the pass. Here is Steve Blatt. Count of the second. Hello, wherever you're listening, on American Forces Radio around the world or here in the United States. The score is one to nothing. Top of the sixth, the Pirates with it in the deciding game of the world. Pirates grounded the nuts in that second base back in the third. They are ready to throw, and a swinging foul. It dribbles back behind the plate and over toward the Oriole dugout. Back one. They are has made one big mistake. The screwball has stayed high to Clemente in the fourth inning. That's the only run of the ball game, a home run. Down ball right back to Cuellar, gloves it on the mound, takes his time, allows Blast to run a little bit, and then throws him out. Here's Dave Cash. Cash hit a ground ball in the first inning. It took a bad hop, hand cut Brooks Robinson, but on a good play, Brooks threw him out. And then in the fourth inning, he sent a line drive that Davey Johnson running off to his left foot first base club on the outfield grass. So Cash is over two and four for 28. Well up in the batter's box. They are throw, strike, breaking pitch. Cash in all the time and he has been at bat in this World Series has not struck out. One strike pitch fouled off to the right and he has two strikes on it. Cash makes good bat contact. He has now been up 28 times and hasn't struck out once. On deck is the speedy Gene Klein. Playing Cash straight away, infield straight up. Foul tipped on the swing. Hendricks cannot hold on to it, and Ellie may have taken a pop on the hand. At least in one of his thigh muscles. It's walking around. It is still two strikes. Hendricks walks out in front of the plate. Jim, in that regard, that you just mentioned Cash, a very tough man to strike out. It's proven down through this season, too. Murtaugh would use him a lot on hitting and running and running and hitting. He's with that back control. He's not afraid to send that man. They are ready and throws, and there's a foul tip, and this one looks as though it goes off Dave Cash's left foot. Uh, Hendricks has taken the foul tip, and now Cash takes one. Still two strikes to Cash, with one out in the Pittsburgh six. 
Well, Jim, as you said, and I said early in the show, they have all wanted to rest up. <laughs> Overhand pitch, it stays outside. One ball, two strikes. The Orioles, as Bob pointed out, will not rest up. On Wednesday, they'll climb aboard a plane and fly to Japan for about a month of exhibition. One ball, two strikes inside, it's 2-2. Two -two. And in recent years, the team that has gone to play the World Series in Japan has not been the champion. Most of the time, the runner's up. The Orioles will try to break that scheme today. Swing and a miss, and we talk about a strikeout, and Ed Cash goes down on a screwball. Fourth strikeout for Cuellar, and here's Gene Klein. Hit the first pitch in the first inning and drove Rettman deep in center field to haul in his line drive, and then bunted. Cuellar made the fine fielding play in the fourth and threw him out. He was not sacrificing. He was trying to butt his way on base. Fines very fast. We are ready to throw, and Fines goes for an outside low pitch, swinging and missing. One to nothing, the Pirates. Baltimore crowd, quiet here. Waiting for their team to come back. Another swing and a miss by Fines. And as yesterday, when we had a little bit more than 44,000 here, which is about 8,000 below capacity, today we are also playing to a below capacity crowd at Memorial Stadium. Two strikes to Klein, who fouls it, and it goes off his bat. And he'll have to come back. The ball bounced out in the fair territory, but Nestor Shylock, as he's done on several occasions today, very quick to call it foul and in a hurry. <laughs> on deck is Roberto Clemente with two outs. Clemente has 12 World Series hits. The record held by two men, Bobby Richardson and Lou Brock. Clemente will have at least a couple more shots in this game. Pass ball is low and away. One ball, two strikes. I think we pointed this out the last time Cuellar pitched up in Pittsburgh. He is known for a screwball, but his out pitch is his fastball. One ball, two strikes. Comes back with a screwball. It stays outside. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, and two to Clemens now, two and two. Clemens only played in 97 games, but still led the Pirates in stolen bases with 15. Swings and misses, and Cuellar strikes out two of the three men he faces. And that's his fifth strikeout. The long hits are errors. We go to the last of the six. For the score, the Pirates won. And the Orioles nothing. We are moving now into the Baltimore sixth inning. And their terrific leadoff batter, Don Buford, will be standing in. He has walked and singled thus far. Pirates leading the Orioles one to nothing. And as Jim Simpson, I think, pointed out earlier, in fact, I'm sure he did, Buford enjoys the reputation of being about the best leadoff hitter in all of the American League. And certainly in Baltimore history, Bob, and Buford, as you said, has walked and singled and been picked off in this ball game. And Buford led the American League in runs scored this year with 98, and of course that is the mark of a five leadoff man. And Buford in this World Series has two home runs off a right-hander by the name of Bob Moose. Buford wore Moose out. One to nothing to score. Steve Blass ready to throw out a Buford switch hitter who watches the strike at the knee. Blass, as we told you when we came on the air, in a pregame interview, said that he was thrilled to have this chance to win the seventh game of the World Series. He said so many pitchers have the talent to do it, but not many get the chance, and he's glad to have it. Breaking pitch, Buford grounds a foul past George Stoller, the coach at first base. He also said, however, that you wouldn't have heard this on the team bus going back to one of our reporters, or the Pittsburgh reporters, that he would like to throw his next pitch in spring training in Bradenton to Roberto Clemente. He felt there would not be quite as much pressure. <laughs> Buford has been on base five times in a row and six times in his last seven times at down. Two strike pitch just misses outside. And ball two strikes to Buford. Pirates leaded by a run, the only run of the ball game. Roberto Cruz Menes, home run. Back in the fourth inning. Menes, second home run of the series. Breaking pitch blocked inside in the dirt. It's two balls, two strikes to Buford. The Pirates have used every single one of their men. All 25 on the roster. The Orioles have used 21 of their 25, with Chico Simone, Jerry Devannon, Kurt Moten, and Clay Dalrymple not used yet. Two balls, two strikes. Fans would like a run. Blast throws, fouled back. It's still 2-2 to view. Jay Mazon, the youngster, now ready for college, who lost both hands in a flash fire when he was about two years old, has been the bat boy. Of the Orioles for many years is retiring after this year, wants to go on to State Teachers College and wind up teaching mathematics. That advertisement for what a handicapped person could do to that boy in Baltimore was on. A curve, change, 
just does miss outside the Buford and it has the Baltimore fans gasping. Three balls, two strikes, as Buford took it all away. Great two pitch, fastball, out to center field. Fines comes in a couple of steps, now backs up one or two and has it for the first out of the six. That'll bring up Dave Johnson, who is 0 for 2. Last time up, hit the ball very sharply, but Pagan made a fine play on the short hop to throw him out. Bob Prince was talking about Pittsburgh pitchers. Bruce Keeson, the young 21-year-older, who will be married tonight, and Bob Moose, the right-hander, who will be his best man. He'll be picked up by a helicopter arranged by the Baltimore Orioles, taking the Friendship Airport in Baltimore, and flown on to the wedding tonight. Keeson ready to throw to Johnson. Throws high pop-up to the infield. Hernandez at shortstop says he has it. Waiting for it to come down and has it. And now, as Bob was saying, that Keaton may take some kidding, Boo Powell coming up about scheduling a wedding on the seventh day of the World Series. I know a broadcaster who broadcast a title fight on the night he was there. And one on to become the voice of the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's plenty. Here's Powell, 0 for 2. He can tie the game up with one swish of the bat. Takes the strike on the outside corner. And Powell, before striking out back in the first inning, scared Steve Blass with a couple of sharp, ripped line drives fouled on the right to line. One run, two hits, one error for the Pirates. No runs, two hits, no errors for the Orioles. We are in the last of the six. Big curve misses outside. One ball, one strike. That's that change that Blass likes to get established early. Blass and Cuellar have both done super jobs here through the first six innings of this deciding World Series game. Last ready. Swing and a miss. Strike to the pal. One ball, two strikes. The pitchers have made few mistakes along the way. Cuellar made the big one. The high school ball to Clemente for the home run. The pitching has been so good that neither the Pirates nor the Orioles have had any activity at all out on the bullpen. Staring into the big left-handed boob pal out of Miami, Florida. And throws another curve and strikes him out swinging. A run hits the air. We've gone through six full innings, and the Pirates leave the Orioles one to nothing. Well, with Jim Simpson, Bob Prince here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, where the Pirates have the lead, one to nothing. They've had two hits, but one of them left the park when Bobby Clemente smashed a home run in the fourth inning over the left center wall. His 12th hit of the series. He needs one more to tie... Uh, a mark of 13 by Bobby Richardson and Lou Brock. And he's coming to the plate right now. It's been a tremendous duel of pitching. And certainly Roberto Clemente, despite what's been written about him around here, that, that he doesn't particularly like this field and everything, is responding like the true champion that he is. And this has been a great duel thus far and still has a long way to go, Jim. Now, Bob, you might say that the Baltimore fans are responding like champions also. They gave Mr. Clemente quite an ovation as he stepped up. They can recognize great talent when they see it. Clemente hits a high school ball on the first pitch for a home run in the fourth inning and swings on the first pitch here and drills it straight away to center field. Retman has only to move a couple of steps and takes the line drive. And that allows the Oro to breathe a little bit easier for at least another eight batter. Clemente doesn't come up again. Bob Robertson has lined to Brooks Robinson, hitting the first pitch, sharply hit ball off Cuellar, and then grounded to Brooks, again hitting the first pitch in the fourth inning. So Robinson has been retired twice by Cuellar on two pitches. One to nothing, the Pirates, seventh inning. Time running out for the Orioles. Pirates holding on to a very tenuous one-run lead. Strike, and as this time, Robertson takes the pitch, not swinging on the first one as he's done. Robertson, the big right-hander with that big uppercut swing that can get the ball out of here in a hurry. Swing and a miss. It's strike two. Robertson is four for 20, but has batted in. A bundle of runs with his two home runs, five RBIs. Swing and a miss, and on three pitches, Cuellar strikes him out swinging. Now struck out six men and three of the last four that he has faced. Here's Manny Sandia. Robinson played one off his chest at third base to throw him out in the second inning. And then Sandia singled in the fifth and was nabbed on a force play and a very close force play at second base on a fine throw by Mark Delaney. 
they are kneeling or rather bending forward, ready before Sangin even steps in. Hand with the ball in his glove, just waiting. Sangin is now ready, and Cuellar is ready to throw. As the ball hit the right field. In comes Frank Robinson. Now he drifts back and off to his left. And Cuellar has a very easy inning. The run hits there is done left. We go to the last of the seventh of parts. Leave the Orioles one to nothing. With Jim Simpson, Bob Prince here from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Oil, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, where the Orioles will be coming to bat. Here in the seventh inning, Frank Robinson, Merv Redmond, and Brooks Robinson. Steve Blass, no runs on two hits through six innings. Mike Cuellar, one run on two hits through seven innings. So we have a real great one going here. And to bring you right along in the action here is Jim Simpson. All right, Bob, and here's Frank Robinson, 0 for 2 today, playing with that right leg, heavily bandaged. But as Robinson, who two days ago said, we've got to show the kind of team we are. We've got to pick ourselves up. It is base running yesterday. He scored the winning run. Last ready to throw, and he checks swings on a breaking pitch, pops it up, cash to second base, who takes it, and there's one out. Frank quickly eliminates himself by checking a swing and popping up the cash at second base. One to nothing to score, and we are in the last of the seventh. Here is Rettman. Hernandez threw him out on the second. The Gon made a fine play on him in the fourth to throw him out. Rettman has the World Series home run. Four RBI. They play him very deep and straight away. Hernandez over near second base. Third ball outside, and it's ball one. Orioles need a run to tie. Blast, who beat them five to one in the third game, is looking just superlative this afternoon. He has struck out five. He has walked two. He has allowed two base hits. A single and a double. Last ready to throw. Breaking pitch. Popped up. Foul and off to the right and out of play. One ball, one strike. <laughs> Orioles were shut out. Thursday afternoon, managed three runs yesterday to win and have none through six and a third innings today. One ball, one strike, pitches up high, two and one to Redmond with Brooks Robinson on deck. We have some activity in the Baltimore bullpen now. If they get something going, Cuellar undoubtedly will be batted for. There's a long way to go. Robinson is out. Redmond, the number five hitter, is up. Two balls, one strike. Back and throws a strike at the knees. And it's Pat Dobson and Dave Leonard up in throwing. Last now, working a little more slowly, ready with a 2 2 and throws. It's high, and Rettman almost took a full cut at it. Checked his swing, and it's three balls, two strikes. Last went 3 2 on Buford in the first inning, and also on Cal. 3 1 to Brooks in the second. 3 2 on Buford in the third, and since that time, has been getting the pitches over and making them hit it. Now he's up to 3 and 2 again. Throws, bouncing ball. Hernandez playing in perfectly by second base, and the shortstop throws him up. Two nine in the Baltimore seventh in this one nothing ball game that the Pirates lead. And here comes Brooks Robinson, and the Baltimore fans look to him for some heroics. Brooks walked in the second and fly to right in the fifth. Robinson has not had the long ball in the World Series, but he has had seven hits and 21 times at bat and driven in five runs. There's a bouncing ball to Hernandez at short hop, and he's got plenty of time to throw him out. That's one of the easiest innings of Steve Blast, and he got the four, five, and six hitters. A run hits the errors. Now we've gone through seven full innings, and those Pirates, hopefully for them, are edging closer to the world championship. They lead one to nothing. With Jim Simpson, Bob Prince from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, where Stadio, Pagan, and Hernandez will go to Cuellar here in the eighth. And with Dobson and uh, Leonard warming up, and Cuellar, the third scheduled batter in the eighth, of course, manager Earl Weaver wishes to be ready. It's anybody's ball game, and here's Jim Simpson. Mike Cuellar has struck out six men, including Stargell twice, and each time he has struck him out with a fastball on three straight pitches in the second inning and on a 3-2 count through the fastball by him in the fifth. Cuellar throws and is down low to Stargell. Ball one. Eighth inning, one to nothing, the Pirates. Clemente's home run in the fourth, the only run of the ball game. Cuellar ready, takes something off the breaking pitch. It's outside 2-0. Earl Weaver said before the game 
Flying into the seventh inning in Pittsburgh, Cuellar was leading two games, two, uh, a lot of trading, two to one. He said, I'd take that same kind of performance today. Cuellar back, it's fouled off to the right. Well, Mike has not allowed two runs, only one run through seven innings now, but the Orioles have not been allowed a run by Steve Blass. Two and one. Cuellar throws, ground ball toward the hole, under the glove of the and on out into left center field, and Sargo rounds first. You know, Jim Simpson, uh, Steve Blast was quoted as having said he went over the scouting reports very carefully, of course, on the Baltimore club. But he noticed one thing while awaiting his opportunity to pitch that was not in the scouting report that he felt would stand him in good stead when he pitched. He went to Dan manager Murtaugh, and Danny said, well, if that's the way you feel, stay with it. The gun, the batter, over two, it's ball one. Did he say what it was? No, that he wouldn't do, and I presume it's because he felt that this game seventh might be necessary, and it turned out to be exactly that. On a note of a gun, it was 0 for 2 today. Charge along at first base, none out in the tired eighth, and there's a swing and a miss at a high fastball from Cuellar, and it's one ball, one strike. Pirates have one run on three hits, and an error that didn't cost him a thing. Baltimore, no runs, two hits, and no errors. The Langer was pulled around towards second base for the left hand of Stargill. Willie grounded it to Belanger's right. He went over and tried to backhand it. The ball scooted right under his glove for the base. Drive center field. Bretman on his horse. Going back. It is Jack near the warning track. Bounces up against the wall. Stargill is on his way around third base. Bretman throws to the cutoff man, Belanger. Belanger throws on toward home. Hendrick waits his cutoff by Powell. 2 nothing. Pirates. In the second with a double goes the gun. And Jim, as you described that, watching the flight of the ball, and Earl Weaver is now coming out. Stargell actually stopped at second base. Your eyes, of course, would be glued out there to see whether or not Redman was going to catch it. Stargell stopped at second, and from our position, you and I both know that ball's not catchable, but down on the field, that is not the case. And he had to hustle, as you described, to get in there, even though they cut the throw off right in front of home plate. Two runs on four hits, and one error now, and... We are in the top of the eighth inning of the set ball game of the World Series, and you've heard all those cliches that have been said over the years. We read a couple of them to you at the outset of the broadcast. There's no tomorrow. Have all winter to rest, everybody in the bullpen, but at the moment, Earl Weaver's going to stick with Mike Cuellar. Right hand is warming up. Fernandez due up, and Cuellar, with the seven, or rather eight and nine batters in the lineup due up, is going to stay in there. Number two, Jackie. you'll recall, doubles in the third game of this World Series off Mike Cuellar and drove in a run and he's driven another run today. Two to nothing. Start to let it off with a single under the glove. The guns long drive. Double off the left center field wall. Scored him. Hernandez trying to move him along with the bunt. Bunt's foul. Off to the right of the plate. Rickard and Watt are now the two pitchers warming. Dobson and Leonard have taken a seat in the Baltimore bullpen. Weaver called the Orioles the best team in the history of Major League Baseball. Danny Murtaugh said his team was underestimated. Another attempt at bunt fouled back by Hernandez. At the moment, it is the Pirate fans who have the chance to feel good, not comfortable, long way from the end yet. I wouldn't know how, Jim Simpson, you could feel comfortable against a team like the Baltimore Orioles, and certainly in the National League, and you saw them enough times to know the same would hold true, against a team like the San Francisco Giants and the Atlanta Braves. You just can't feel it's over until you're in the locker room. Hernandez back in, ready to dig in with a two-strike count. Puts down to Frank Osiak at third base. Now let's see what the pitcher do up. He's still trying to move the man along. Fly to right field. But Frank Robinson goes back. Pagan goes to tag. Robinson takes a one-handed throw. Throws on to third base. And Pagan wisely stays at second as Robinson bounces one on one off to Brooks Robinson at third base. And that'll bring up Steve Blass, who's done quite a job. He has shut out the Orioles through seven innings on two base hits, has struck out five and walked two. second with one out and one run in. The Pittsburgh bullpen is on its feet, not to warm up, but to watch the ball game. They are throws, ground ball toward Robinson, foul territory, gloves it just off third base. And Blast, who sprinted across first base, now must turn around and walk back. 
won this World Series three times before, 1909, 1925, and 1960. They lost the first one ever played in 1903, and again in 1927. Baltimore has won two World Series in 1966 and 1970, lost to the Mets in 1969. Baltimore has managed five hits off Steve Glass in 16 innings, and they've managed one run. He won 5-1 to one at Pittsburgh. He is leading 2 to nothing here in the top of the eighth in Baltimore. Glass is back and ready now with a one-strike count. Pagan leads off at second. Played by that blasted to the opposite field. Swings at a low pitch. It's strike two. Ball was almost in the dirt. The guys have brightened considerably, although remaining overcast since the beginning of this game. Play are back and throws. Ground ball right back to Play R. Keeps the gun at second. Tosses on to Booth Powell, and it's two out in the third eight. That'll bring up Dave Cash. Thrown out by Robinson in the first. Line to Johnson in the fourth, and struck out swinging in the sixth. The first strikeout for Cash in his 29th time at bat in the World Series. Lions lead it two to nothing. They are ready to throw. Ground ball toward Bush Robinson. Very slowly hit Robinson up when it throws on to first base. Dug out of the dirt on another fine play by Drew Powell. Powell has really hauled a couple out of the dirt now to save. Base hit. And turned it into outs. One run on two base hits. No errors. And Pagan lifts down at second base. The last of the eighth we go. The Pirates lead the Orioles. Two to nothing. With Jim Simpson, Matt Prince here from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, where the Pirates have the lead of two to nothing as we go to the bottom half of the eighth. Earl Weaver has switched back to Pat Dobson and uh, Dave Leonard as Cuellar is the scheduled third batter in this inning. Something could happen, of course, to change his thinking right there. Jim? Uh, Bob, 11 years ago, you went down and didn't see Mazeroski's home run when the Pirates won it. They go down to the dressing room for possible celebration. Yesterday, you went down with a score two to one the Pirates, and the Orioles won it. And I'll say goodbye to you now as you go down with a score two to nothing the Pirates as Henrik steps in and takes the strike. Certainly have enjoyed very much working with you, and I want to thank you very much. It's been a real thrill, regardless of the outcome of this series. Thank you, Bob Prince. Ball is dropped in the dirt to Henrik, and it's one ball, one strike. Two to nothing to score. We are in the last of the eighth. Henrik Spillanger, an undoubtedly a pinch hitter, as the Orioles, Earl Weaver, needs some runs to tie it up. And the Orioles fans are well aware, as you are, of the situation. Time is running out. Last track with the fastball in under the hands of two balls, one strike. The last time that a pitcher had a shutout in the final game of the series was five years ago when Dave McNally of the Orioles did it to the Dodgers, winning one to nothing right here in this ballpark. Two and one, breaking pitch. It is a foul ball, gloved by Robertson. Down and back of first base, and it's two balls, two strikes. The last time that a seven-game World Series ended in a shutout was when Sandy Koufax of the Dodgers, now with NBC, we're happy to say, and eligible for the Hall of Fame next year, in 1965, shut out the Minnesota Twins two to nothing at Minnesota. The ball, two strikes to Hendricks. Belanger on deck. Blass, who did quite a bit of walking around the mound in the third game up in Pittsburgh when he won that game, five to one, has walked around the mound again and is now ready to throw to Hendricks. Ball up the middle under the glove of Cash. Base hit. Hendricks makes the wide turn. And Ellie, who has reached on an error and a double, is one again. This time with a single. The third hit given up by Steve Blast. Now, quickly, the fire bullpen begins to stir. And this time, I think they're going to go to work. They've been standing up watching the masterpiece of Blast. Blast gave up a total of three hits in that 5-1 win, and has now surrendered his third hit here. Here's Mark Belanger, 0 for 2, hit into a double play and line to center. Pirates lead at 2-0. We're in the last of the eighth of the last game of the World Series. Last throw is Belanger. Tried to check his swing, does not. It's strike one. Tom Chauffe, who has batted a couple times before as a pinch hitter, out and on deck. The bat for Cuellar. Chauffe is 0 for 4. Last throws, outside low, blocked by Sandia. Henrik's not going anywhere. One to 
One ball, one strike. Last pitching, of course, from the stretch. Comes back, foul back to the screen. It's one and two to Belanger. Belanger, during the regular season, a 266 hitter. In this series, he is four for 20. One ball, two strikes. Last ready. Ground ball up the middle and get through. Hendricks almost is going to be got the second base. They had to wait. A little looper took a hop. Hendricks didn't know whether or not it was going to be caught. And so stopped at first base, and then finally, as the ball got through and bounced on into the outfield, Hendricks went down to second base, and they've got the leadoff men on with none out. Luke Walker, left hander, up and throwing a show pay, comes in. The tying runs are off. Show pay, not a home run hitter, is up. He has been up four times in the World Series, each time as a pinch hitter, and has not had a base hit. The Pirates believe he's up there to bunt to move the runners along. Chope, a little left-handed batter, crouches, takes inside under the hands, and he wasn't looking to bunt then. Ball one. On deck, John Buford. Pirates two, Baltimore nothing. The Orioles' best chance in the last of the eight. Again, it's at the knees of the fastball. Strike one. One ball, one strike. He looked down Billy Hunt's coach at third. It's the fifth time, and Tom has been up, and that ties the series record. As we said, he has not been successful as a pinch hitter thus far. Hendricks is second. Beland is first. Last. He squares around the bus. Good punch. Last has to go to first base. The runners move up on the sacrifice bus. I'm sure they're not about to put Don on, the winning run on base. And now with this, the oil broadcasters, Bob Prince's leftist, Bill O'Donnell. Jim, on that uh, bunt by Chope, I believe I saw Sam Dean bark out the glass, and then also point towards third. I think we've got to play at third base. Maybe Blast did not see him yell. That's why Blast went to first. Okay, Jim. Blast ready to throw to Buford. There's one for two plus to walk. He fouls it back. One. Last, as you said, Bill, may have had a play at third base, but of course the one thing you do not want to happen is to lose the out. So Blast went for the out and to keep the potential winning run off. Buford in with a one-strike count. Goes, it's blowing away. It's one ball, one strike to Buford. Hendricks on at third, but Andrew's second. There's one out of the last of the eighth. The Pirates lead it by two. This is the first time that the Orioles have had a man as far as third base. Now there are two 20 game winners warming up for the Orioles. Dave McNally, winner twice here, and Pat Thompson. Fastball to the foul back, one ball, two strikes. So Walker and Justy in the Pirate bullpen, and McNally and Dobson in the Orioles bullpen. And they count one and two to Don Buford. on deck, Dave Johnson. Last staring in the future. Throws breaking pitch, grounded toward Robertson at first base. One run comes in. It's two to one as Robertson set on the bag and moving to third is Belanger. Pirates two, Baltimore one. We're in the last of the eighth and Johnson. Well, three RBIs, 0 for 3 today, however, has a chance to tie up the ball game. Pagan is over on the third base side of the mound, talking to Steve Blast. Manny Sandin walks out in front of the mound, looking to see what Dave Johnson will do, what the Orioles will try with a tying run on at third base. Yeah. Jim uh, Johnson is somewhat in a similar situation as he was yesterday, although he knocked on the tie run from second base. Right now, he's in a similar situation, tie run at third. Last throw, blown away to Johnson, ball one. John Deck batter, big boo pal. The Earls 
have come alive late in the ball game. Hendricks went off the eighth with a single. Belanger bottom with a single. Chope sacrificed them along. Buford didn't feel grounded to Robertson at first. Scored the run. Ball accidentally checked and fouled off to the right. One ball, one strike to Dave Johnson. Now we'll go back to what was said before the World Series began. This should be a super series. Whether the Pirates win it or the Orioles win it, it's been fulfilled. This has been a super series and still is. One ball, one strike. Last throw, strike, a slider on the upside corner. Johnson looked as though we're going to offer at it and then decided they might be outside the strike zone, but takes it to strike two. One ball, two strikes. Tying run 90 feet away, staying on the third base is Mark Belanger. Last walks off the mound and calls off Dan Gian. This is an occurrence that we saw happen in the third game quite frequently. As a matter of fact, the Pirates do this quite frequently in the National League Championship. They must have had a dozen or more conferences every ball game between catcher and pitcher. So now Nesta Shylock is going out saying, Devil and break this thing up. One ball, two strikes to Johnson. Van Gien back, moves a rather blast walking around behind the mound, now strides up on the mound, pains off the pitching rubber, but the count of one and two, stares into Van Gien for the side. He's ready. Johnson takes inside, checks his swing, it's 2-2. Davey looks down to Billy Hunter, the third base coach. Pirates lead it by a run, last to the eighth. Together with Jim Simpson and Bob before we go to the top of the ninth inning, the Pirates lead in the ball game two to one. And for the second straight day, an Oriole 20 game winner is a late inning reliever, namely Pat Dobson. Dobson came on in the top of the tenth inning yesterday when the ball game was locked up at 2 2. He faced four men, then gave way for McNally before Baltimore won it in the bottom of the tenth inning. Now it's Dobson replacing Mike Quayar. Quayar can only be the loser as he leaves the ball game with the Pirates leading the Orioles two to one. Quayar traveled the first eight innings, gave up uh, the two pirate runs along with four base hits, and he struck out six. In the top of the ninth, against Dobson, it'll be the right hand swinging Clines, Clemente, and Robertson. Clines lined the center field deep in the first, bunted, and was thrown out in the fourth, and struck out in the sixth. Dobson, of course, will try to keep the Pirates within a run, and the Orioles will have one more chance to try and catch the Pirates. Dobson ready with the first pitch. It's a slider over. Strike one. In the Baltimore Knights, if you care to look ahead, Boo Powell, Frank Robinson, and Merv Whitman. Dobson, the right-hander, to throw to the right-handed hitter, and a breaking pitch stays inside, and Klein's ducks under it. It's one ball, one strike. Dave Leonard, who has thrown a lot in the bullpen, and some in this World Series is warming up, and Dave McNally still for the Orioles. Pitches outside and low. Klein's did not go around. It is two balls, one strike. Bullpen for the moment at least, no one is throwing. Roberto Clemente's on deck as Dobson throws. Ground ball right up the middle. Belanger back a second base, quick sidearm throw, and he has got the speedy climbs and a fine play. Jim reputedly uh, climbs has the greatest speed among the pirates from home plate uh, down to third base. So Belanger, who had a range quite a bit to his glove side, had to make a slightly off-balance, very toss to get time to the bat. Here is Roberto Clemente. As homered in this ball game, has been thrown out and lined to Rettman in center field. His home run in the fourth was the first run of the ball game of this 2-1 game, which the Pirates lead. He has hit safely in all 14 World Series appearances. Add one more base hit, and he'll tie a record for the most hits in the series. Breaking pitch is down low from Dobson, ball one. Thirteen base hits by Bobby Richardson and Lou Brock, and Clemente now has 12. Clemente has made a lot of believers out of American League followers what kind of ball player he is. Low and away, it is 2-0. Now Dave Leonard has sat down. In the Baltimore bullpen, and another right-hander takes his place along with McNally. And he what? Dobson ready and throws and misses outside the strike zone. It is 3-0. Oh. Pirates 2, Baltimore 1. We are in the top of the ninth for the last game of the World Series. Dobson working quickly, throws a strike on the outside corner. 
Three balls, one strike. Bonetti was taking all the way. On deck is big Bob Robertson. Dobson will have his work cut out for him in facing Clemente Robertson and possibly Sanguian to keep this ball game within reach. The 3 1 pitch from Pat Dobson. Foul to the screen. 3 and 2. Baltimore won games 1 and 2 here at Memorial Stadium. Then we moved on to Three River Stadium. In games 3, 4, and 5, it was the Pirates. Yesterday in 10 innings, Baltimore, we were all tied at three games apiece. And this is the decider. Clemente waiting on the 3-2 pitch from Pat Dobson with one out on the ninth. Here's the pitch. He reaches outside, protecting the plate, and fouls it off to the right. Roberto did not take a big swing. Simply put the bat on the outside of the plate and checked it off to the right side. Well, they played him around to right during the entire series. He's boomed a triple and a home run to left center. Now here's another foul to the right. Clemente can pull the ball. And you know, when we talk about the 1960 series, the series that was won in seven games by the Pirates, on the home run by Mazeroski, Bill Mazeroski, who has not appeared in the series, was the first man in the batting cage for the Pirates today. And he rifled five into the left field seats. First five pitches. Three balls, two strikes. Dobson ready. Breaking pitch strikes out Clemente. Change up curve to Roberto Clemente and Dobson strikes him out. Well, he had him 3-0. and oh. He took 3-1. and one, Was swinging on 3-2, then fouled off a couple of pitches, and the slow curve got Roberto Clemente. Well, unless we go to extra innings, we'll fall one hit short. Uh, the series record for hits of Bobby Richardson and Lou Brock. Right now, the Pirates, though, still lead by a run. We're in the ninth inning. Here's Bob Robertson swinging and missing on the first pitch. Robertson struck out the last time up. He is over three. First time up, he had a ball sharply to Robertson at third base. That's Bob Robertson hitting to Brooks Robinson at third base. Pat Dobson ready and throws a breaking pitch, and Bob Robertson just did get a little piece of that as he swung hard, but it just... Slipped off the top of his bat and back to the screen. Foul strike two. Manny Sandian on deck. Two runs, four hits, one error for the Pirates. One run, four hits, no errors for the Orioles. Dobson ahead of Robertson throws him a change up high. It's one ball, two strikes. Robertson has a couple of home runs and five RBIs in the World Series. One ball, two strikes. Curve just misses inside. Ball started out on Robinson's left shoulder and ducked back inside, but did not drop over the inside corner of the plate. It's two and two. McNally and Watt continue to warm. Dobson throws. Fastball misses outside. Well, you talk about George Blanda, the old quarterback of the National Football League, 43 years old. The Pittsburgh runs today have been knocked in by 37-year-old Roberto Clemente and 36-years-old Jose Begon. All born and live in Puerto Rico. 3-2, and there's a drive down the left field line. Buford pulled over, gloves it out on the warning track, and holds Robertson to a long single down near the left field corner. That's the fifth base hit for the Pirates, and the first off, Dobson. Two out on the ninth, two to one the score. And here's Manny Sanguian. Robinson threw him out on a bad hopper off Brooks's chest in the second. Sanguian single to left. It was dipped in the close force play in the fifth and fly to Robinson in right in the seventh. Dobson throws. It's outside. Ball one. Big Willie Starkey. He is on deck. And ready, throws a fastball, catches the outside corner. One ball, one strike. <laughs> Lights have been on throughout the entire ball game, but the skies have brightened considerably here in Baltimore. As Dobson pitching from the stretch to the crouching Sanguin, who fouls it off upstairs to the right side. One ball, two strikes. Bob Robertson walks back to first base, where he's being held by Boog Powell. Oh, 
Baseball is over after today, but not for the Orioles, who on Wednesday will fly on to Tokyo to play about three or four weeks of exhibition games with those fine Japanese teams. They'd like to go to Japan, a winner at the moment on the short end, uh, a two to one game. They're down by a run. Kane down low. It is two balls, two strikes to San Gian. That pirate bullpen, most all of them are up and leaning against the fence or standing against the fence out there in right center field. Dobson taking his time and working very carefully to San Gian. Now is ready. Throws a curveball, bounce. Robinson charges from third base, picks it up, fires on to first base, safe. slow roller and here on the Baltimore infield which has had its share of rain and play Robinson had to come all the way in for it it was not like the artificial trip in Pittsburgh where the ball would have flipped up much quicker to him and so Earl Weaver is out with two out and Sarge will do up and I would imagine Dave McNally might get another call McNally the good left-hander the base Sarge the great left-handed home run hitter And Dobson is on his way out. McNally came in yesterday in a situation very similar with two men on and two men out as they are today. Runners at second and third and or rather first and second and walk starter. And Dave is being called on again. Bill O'Donnell. Well, it's very unusual, Jim, as uh, we both pointed out yesterday together with Bob Brinson in the World Series game and naturally to today. Today's even more crucial than yesterday is that you have two consecutive days. You have three 20 game winners appear in a ball game. Yesterday it was Palmer, Dobson, and McNally. And this afternoon in game seven, it is Boyar plus now Dobson in the ninth, followed by McNally also in the ninth inning. Now, a slightly different situation uh, from McNally's appearance this afternoon than from yesterday. McNally came on with Stargell. Plus another left-hand batter after Willie Stargell, Al Oliver, also a left-hand batter. He comes on right now with a Willie Stargell, the left-hand batter, with runners at first and second, saying Gian and Robertson, and to follow Stargell is a right-hand batter, Jose Pagan. So you got uh, managerial brains, I'm sure, twisting in both the dugouts. Weaver has been twisting his brain, uh, bringing on McNally to face the left-hand power of Stargell. And I wonder if Murtaugh right now might be twisting his brains wondering that if Stargell gets on, if Stargell gets on and should the bases be loaded, uh, would, uh, what would he do with Pagan? I would assume naturally he'd have Pagan bat because he'd have the right-hander going against McNally. By the same token, with Weaver going back to the Baltimore dugout, if Stargell should get on and Pagan the right-hand batter do after Stargell, would he go to his bullpen where he has Eddie Watt warming and I believe Tom Dukes has also joined Eddie Watt. It is not Dukes that changed that. It's Dave Leonard. Leonard is up again, warning with what? All right, Jim. And if you want to go a little bit farther, that should happen. With Murtaugh go back to the bench to Al Oliver. And what happens now is Robertson's at second base, San Gian at first, two out of the ninth inning. Pirates lead it two to one, and here is Willie Stark. Last time up, he singled and scored ahead of the double by Jose Bagan. The first two times up, Stargell, who hit 48 home runs during the regular season, struck out. Sun has at last broken through at Memorial Stadium. McNally throws ground ball toward the second baseman. Johnson down to one knee, throws on and on one pitch. McNally's got it. A run, two hits, no errors, and two left. And now we go to the ninth inning. Lou Powell, Frank Robinson, and Merv Redman, and the Orioles' last chance. Pittsburgh leads Baltimore two to one. We're down perhaps to the final inning in the seventh game of the 1971 World Series. And Baltimore has the power part of its attack coming up against right-hander Steve Lance. Lance and the Pirates lead the Orioles by a score of 2-1. to one. Powell is hitless in his seventh game. Frank Robinson is the next due man. He is hitless. And then the third man due, Merv Rettenmund, he is also hitless. Now, do you right, though? If the Orioles should lose this, they can't see afterwards. They didn't have it their full shot in the ninth inning. They got the three, four, five batters. Class ready to throw to Big Boog Powell. A slow curve drops over strike one. Powell is 0 for 3 today, but as we said, ripped a couple of vicious line fouls down the right field line back in the first inning. 
Al during the regular season at 22 home runs. Dick Robinson during the regular season at 28. Herb Redman, 11. Al deep in the batter's box. Last throw is another break breaking pitch, but this one is high and away, and it's one ball, one strike. Those Pirates continue to stand out, leaning against the fence. Nobody working out there. They're leaving it up to Steve Blass, who won the third game 5-1 to one on a three-hitter and leads 2-1 to one in the last of the ninth year on a four-hitter. One ball, one strike. Big Ted drilled foul, pulled deep in the seat in right field. Now way out in front and picks up some dirt in anger and throws it away. He was too far out in front of the ball. <laughs> Ball, two strikes. The Orioles won the first two games. The Pirates the next three. Baltimore yesterday in ten innings. And this is it. Last ready. One ball, two strikes. Big curve, and it is down low. Thus far, Glass has not challenged Powell with a fastball here in the ninth inning. He has thrown him four breaking pitches. Three of them, he has taken something off those breaking pitches. Two Orioles won last of the night. Count of 2 2 to Booth Powell. Steve Blast throws. There's the fastball, and it's grounded on two hops to catch. At second base, Rosanna Robertson, and there's one out in the Baltimore ninth. The Pirates are two outs away from their fourth World Series win. But here is Frank Robinson, 0 for 3. Robinson, as we said, handicapped. But he is the man that sparked the winning run in the 10th yesterday. Is the man that sparked the initial rally in the first game of the home run and has two home runs in this series. And a total of seven hits in 24 attempts. Hops it up. Back goes Hernandez. Nobody else near him. Hernandez in short left field and there's two out. And that leaves it squarely up to Merv Retman. The Pirates now one out away from a clubhouse celebration. The Orioles picked by most to win the World Series. Stiller within a run, one swing of the bat, can tie it up. But Steve Lass has allowed a total of two runs and seven hits in 17 and two-third innings. Breaking pitch, flatter over. Pagan is in at third base and very close to the line, guarding against that extra base hit. Hernandez is over near second base. Big hole between third and short. One strike pitch to Retman. Right up the middle, Hernandez in back of second base, throws from there, and that's the series. Pittsburgh wins. Most of these fans simply stand idly by, disappointed. Their Orioles, the favorites, have lost. But the Pirate bullpen empties. They're in around Bob Robinson, and especially around Steve Blass. And now they make their way toward the dugout. As we hear that the World Series Sports Car Award winner goes to guess who, Roberto Clemente, who had all of those base hits solved at all, including a home run today. Well, there's riotism down in the uh, Pirate dressing room. It's already going on. Let's go down and join Bob Prince and all those down there. Thank you and your players and Steve Blass and your whole club. Thank you, Commissioner. I don't believe there's been a better play series in the, since I've been around anyway. I'm deeply grateful. Andy Murtaugh, let me step in here for just a moment. 1960, you performed the impossible, and you did it again. Congratulations here in 1971. Thank you, Bob. Steve Blass, who pitched such a great game, Steve. Coming in here with the uh, chairman of the board, Mr. John Galbraith. Steve, I know you just can't express yourself emotion-wise. You're all wrung out. I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is the biggest thrill that could ever happen. I, I don't believe it. Skinny kid from Falls Village, Connecticut. <laughs> uh, well, not so skinny out there. You showed them all there was to show them, Steve. And was there any one moment in that ball game that had you really worried? There were several. Uh, one when they hit the two men on, and then one hanging slider I threw to Davey Johnson that he popped up, uh, but he missed the pitch. I can't, I can't believe how many people have this kind of an opportunity. Well, you, you rose right to the occasion. And here with me right now, the greatest leg fielder in the game of baseball, Roberto Clemente. Bonnie, congratulations on a straight World Series. Thank you, Bob. And before I, I say anything in English, I would, I would like to say something for my mother and father in Spanish. Uh, en el día más grande de mi vida, para 
los nenes, la bendición mía, y que mis padres echen mi bendición en Puerto Rico. Mr. and Mrs. Fomeni, we love them, too. Yeah, we understood you. Now, here's the chairman of the board, Mr. John Galbraith. I know how thrilled you are, Mr. Galbraith. I can't say anything other than this. Magnificent. Just magnificent. Danny will do the talk. Yes, and here's the president of the ball club, Danny Galbraith. Danny, well, as the president of the club, you now have come in like your father before you, 11 years before he won the championship as the president of the club. Now, you're the president. I know that you can... Uh, Go home with this one and really feel happy. Well, Bob, it's a great heritage to follow here with Dad. And the way these boys fought back, I think, shows the class of a, of a real winner. And I'm so happy for all of them, as well as the, the folks back in Pittsburgh that have been supporting us all the way.